Many of you have probably noticed that throughout these series of videos on composition, I haven't really covered any of the usual compositional rules. Those rules being the rule of thirds, the golden ratio, diagonal lines, leading lines, and so on. Now, all of these compositional rules or aids, I think are extremely important in finding out what works and what doesn't work in framing up a shot. But you've also probably all heard that the rules of composition are meant to be broken. And while I fully agree with this, it is important to at least understand these basic rules of composition before you break away from them, especially if you're just starting out in photography. Now, from my own perspective, I rarely approach a scene with a specific method of composition in mind. For my own part, I try really hard to rely on my instincts. If the composition doesn't feel quite right when you're looking at it in the viewfinder, then it probably isn't going to work. So my advice is trust your instincts and keep those compositional rules in the back of your toolbox as somewhat of a reference point. One aspect of nature photography that I thoroughly enjoy is finding compositions within utter chaos. I love to uh, fuss about behind the lens and lose myself in the moment. Now, I'll be the first to admit that many of the puzzles that I try to put together uh, can be a little daunting and in most cases, nine times out of 10, just don't work out. But it's these challenges and the odd success that keep me motivated and wanting to go back for more. Okay, these next few examples, I'd like to kind of go over what my thought process is when I'm composing in chaotic situations. Now, most of these are forest uh, images uh, because that tends to be the most chaotic of situations. Uh, but this first image here, you'll notice that there isn't really any kind of rules of composition that I'm following here. I'm just going basically off of my instincts. So I can tell you what drew me to the scene and what my thought process was. Now, you may or may not agree with my process. It's all very subjective, but this is just to kind of give you an idea of, of how I would go about photographing a scene like this. And, and you know, I this particular scene I do think works, but I, I will show you some more where it doesn't quite work. So originally I was uh, attracted to the, uh, the stump in the middle of the frame and growing out of the top of the stump you can't quite see the top but growing over to the left side is uh, some green salal and i just love the way how it drooped over that stump so that was my basis to start my composition and then everything from there i wanted to either enhance that stump or point towards it so you'll notice that we have these beautiful mosses hanging off the tree here if I went right up close to the stump, there weren't any mosses. So I had to back up with a longer lens so that I was able to include those mosses and, and uh, get rid of some of, that, uh, some of those bright patches in the sky. You'll also notice that we have some kind of drooping branches in the foreground here. Again, they all kind of fall towards the, uh, the central subject. Same with the evergreen on the side here. It all falls towards the stump. We have these uh, bracken ferns here that also sweep in to, towards the, uh, the center of the image. We have this plant here, which is quite bright. Again, it's directing your eye to the center of the image. And then we have another bracken fern down here that brings your eye into the center of the image. Everything that I've included in the frame was included on purpose to direct your eye towards this stump. 
Now you will notice that there are a lot of bright areas in the sky and in the background. And I dealt with those when I processed this image. So this is actually a raw file. There was also a stick here. Now I did notice this uh, when I was taking the photograph and I didn't think it would really bother me, but then when I processed it, I decided to take it out. So this is the raw file and here is the, the finished file. And you'll notice that I've really tried to brighten up the center to again draw your attention to this stump. But it's not just about the stump, it's about the whole scene. I filled the frame with things that I really wanted to be in the frame. Everything is there uh, on purpose to enhance the whole feeling of the whole, of the whole image, if that makes sense. There's nothing in there that I would really want to take out other than that silly stick that was down here. And in retrospect, I mean, you don't even notice it, but it's just one of those silly things that you think is gonna distract from the final image when in fact it, it doesn't distract at all. My reasoning for taking it out was that there was a little bit of a pathway here and I didn't want it blocked by anything. Now, as far as processing goes, I brightened up a lot of uh, the ferns and the highlighted areas in the frame to really make it kind of pop and, and glow. But I think you'll agree that this image, even though it's chaotic, it, it does work. And uh, I think it has a really great feeling to it, uh, like a, a rainforest um, feeling, which is what I really wanted to kind of portray to whoever was looking at this photograph. Okay, now if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you may recognize this photograph. This is one that I took in the Chilcotin, which is uh, mid-central British Columbia. And I was on a trip with my friend Jeremy. The funny thing is when I took this photograph or when I discovered this scene, I, I thought it was just absolutely brilliant. I love the, the chaotic nature of it. And I thought that the bright red rose hips uh, and these strong diagonal lines formed by these dead branches would hold it together. But the more I look at this and the longer I've sat on it, uh, the more I keep thinking to myself, it really doesn't work. Uh, it's just too, too busy. Uh, I, I took on too much of a challenge here. I could, for the life of me, simplify this. Uh, it's just, there's just too much going on. So this is the raw file and the... Uh, the finished file is here. And in some respects, I actually think I prefer the, <laughs> the raw file. So it just goes to show that sometimes when you get a little bit excited about a scene, uh, sometimes that excitement takes over a rash rationale for taking it. And in this case, I, I, I just don't think it works. Uh, it's just too busy, too much going on, has some great elements in there, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's just not working for me. Now this next image is uh, an older image. It's a uh, probably 15, 20 years old now. I took this with a four by five film camera. This is on transparency film. And it's funny, when I took that last photograph that I just showed you, I was actually thinking of this one as an example from past experiences. Except in this case, I really do think it works. Now it's extremely chaotic, uh, but there's some elements in here that kind of hold it together, unlike the other photograph. First of all, I just absolutely love the uh, the rimmed frost on uh, the outside of these leaves here. And when I took this, I knew that it was gonna be extremely busy. So if I just zoom out again here, I absolutely love the green and I think it's, the color is uh, enough to separate it from the busy background. And also we have these beautiful uh, red uh, rose hips kind of dotted throughout the frame. Uh, 
So this image, uh, it makes an excellent print and it's one of those images that you can hang on the wall and go back to over and over again and discover new things in it. It doesn't have that wow factor, but it has some great details in here that I think hold it together. This image here, I decided to put it in because I kind of get mixed uh, kind of reactions to this. Most of them are kind of lukewarm and I have shown this to other photographers and they just think it's too busy. But whenever I look at this, I, I just love the composition. And uh, now I will admit that these white uh, trees down here at the base, it would have been better if they weren't there. But as they are now, I think they, they're not that distracting, but perhaps I'm wrong. What I like about this image is, first of all, the, the, the green on green, the contrast between the two greens. I really love that uh, river behind and that beautiful kind of uh, uh, emerald green. Also, I think this uh, image has a lot of movement in it. And I try to include that movement in my composition. So if I take a paintbrush here, I'll just show you what I'm talking about. All of these branches seem to lead your eye back into the frame. I love how this curves around here and then back around to here. And if you follow this around here, it goes back. And because this is the bright area, my eye is drawn up to here and then around. It just keeps circling around and around. So there's lots of movement going on. Even these branches that are a little distracting still lead you back into the frame like that. Now I know there's those of you out there that will totally disagree with my assessment of this <laughs> photograph, but that's the beauty of composition and, you know, composing for yourself and composing an image in the way that you like it. And hopefully you'll have an audience that follow your view and uh, will enjoy the composition the way that you see it. But you know, not everybody is going to see an image the way that you see it. last photograph isn't quite as complicated as the other images that I've shown you but I thought I'd throw it in because it does have some interesting elements going on that perhaps will help you in your own compositions down the road. You'll notice that this uh, frame has a stream going right down the center and it just happens to also be the brightest uh, subject in, in, the, uh, in the frame. So your eye is immediately drawn to those bright areas. But what I try to do is arrange these logs in a way that they draw your eye through the frame. So we have this one coming from center right, draws you down to the brightest area of the log, down to the center, to the stream, up the stream, and then up another log, and then across to another log. And you'll notice that we also have some bright sky in the background here, so that also draws you into the frame. And the idea with composition is to try to draw your viewer in, but also at the same time, keep their gaze on your photograph. You don't want anything distracting them or pulling them out of the frame. So I think this works really well. Now this is the raw file and uh, I'll show you the, the finished uh, file here. And here is the finished photograph here. Now I have cropped it. Uh, I cropped some of the, the stuff out on the left. But I think you'll agree it works quite well. Now, in an ideal world, I would have preferred it if uh, I'd had a little bit of the creek uh, just going past this top of this log here. So there's a bit of a contrast between darker areas and brighter areas, if that makes sense. Kind of like this section here. <music> Once 
once again, everybody, thank you ever so much for tuning in to this week's video about composition. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. And as always, if you enjoy the content of my channel, be sure to subscribe. Now, I just wanted to mention the next few weeks, I'm going to be away with Thomas Heaton, Gavin Hardcastle and Nick Page. We're all going on a big adventure. So if you'd like to follow along on that adventure, please be sure to go to uh, f4roadtrip.com, sign up for our newsletter, and uh, we'll keep you informed of what's going on and where we're at and, and all that good stuff. All right, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. And until next week, bye for now. Mm -hmm.